Hey everyone, thanks for listening again to another episode of Real Talk Fishing with No Limits. Today we're going to head over to Minnesota and talk boats, tournament fishing, and all things walleye. we got Mr. Kent Anderson of Warrior Boats coming on. He's going to tell us about where the market is, where it's heading, what's going on, what's new with Warrior Boats. We're going to talk some National Walleye Tour because Kent's been on the tour for a long time and has some good insight. So stay tuned and let's go away to light with Kent Anderson. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Real Talk Fishing with No Limits. Today we're heading over to Wisconsin, Minnesota, whichever, wherever you can find Kent, that's where he's going to be during the day uh, with Mr. Kent Anderson, National Wildlife Tour Pro, uh, Warrior Boat, Older CEO, CEO, I don't even know what your title is over there, President. Um, uh, it's uh, whatever, what's happening, Kent? Not much, yeah, I'm National Sales Marketing Manager for Warrior Boats and Fish National Wildlife Tour, been doing it a long time, been around the the walleye fishing industry for many, many years, following, uh, following my dad's footsteps. He started fishing back in the mid nineties and kind of just went from there. It's a family business. It's a family affair. You, your brother fished the national walleye tour. You guys are involved with the aim circuit as well, right? Big sponsors over there. Yep. Yeah. Warrior <laughs> boats is one of the presenting sponsors along with the Yamaha with, uh, aim, aim pro fishing or aim weekend walleye series. And, a lot of a lot of good stuff going on there. They're running four four divisions now. They have the Minnesota, the Wisconsin divisions; those are the staples. And then they have the North Dakota division. And then they also added the River Series here last year, which is was a a good start last year, mm-hmm. and hopefully some growth we see there this year and growth in North Dakota and as a whole. It's been been fantastic. They already got some tournaments filled up for the year, so it's been good. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That river circuit is uh, very appealing to me. I keep thinking, ah, I like to dip my, my toes in. I'm a, I'm a river rat. I know you, you like the rivers. You've had some good success on the rivers, just like your father. Yeah. Especially the Missouri River, right? It's near and dear to you. Yeah, that, that's a love-hate relationship out there. You know, I <laughs> haven't cashed many checks on the Missouri River, but the one I did cash was a good one. So that's, It's uh, first and second, I think, you and your brother went on that one. Right yeah, on we went one and two, so that was pretty special. You know, just a whole lot of the, whole lot of the the backstory on it was pretty awesome. Being so, it was the last place where I fished along with my dad at the NWD Championship in '16, and you know, days later he passed away, and you know, God bless him. We miss him a lot, and she is still here. So, uh, yeah, and this, then you guys come back three. I don't even remember what year that was. 2019, 2014, uh, 2021. Maybe? 20. It was after. Okay, 2021, yeah. but. Pretty much first time back, probably in a little while. Yeah, that was the first time NWT had been back there since then. So, and it was, uh, it was pretty cool. Double punch for it, one two. I mean, it was uh, some things are just meant to be, right? We yeah. had that with yeah. uh, with JJ Bernardi last year, Spring Valley opening up, you know, and absolutely. Uh, we definitely got people looking over us and making things happen. So that, that's cool. It's a cool story. Um, yeah, that's just awesome. For people that don't know Kent, tell us a little bit. What's what's your background, Kent? Where are you coming from? What you got going on? How'd you get into the warrior boat stuff? Oh, that's a, that's a long <laughs> story, but I grew up in Alexandria, Minnesota, a little hard walleye country. Uh, I graduated from Amory, Wisconsin back in 1998. And after that, I worked with a family construction business, general contractors building custom homes and I ended up going off to uh, tech school up in Alexandria, Minnesota for marine and small engine mechanics. And from there, I got hired on to Warrior Boats and worked along with Troy Latour there. And Pete Harsh got me in the door there. And I worked there till 2004. And kind of there was a first little economic slowdown there. And so at that time, I went back. And even when I was at Warrior, I was working on the weekends back home, pounding and nails. It just never really got it out of your blood. and was back there doing that and when it slowed down i just kind of said yeah time to go back and be a carpenter for a while and in 2011 uh four owners or four guys chuck barth uh my father david al linen and pat brookshaw got together because warrior boats had shut down in 2009 you know just it it was you know tough times from 08 kind of a family feud and they just kind of closed it up and walked away like they were going home for the day and just never came back and <laughs> those those four guys kind of put together a plan to uh, bring it back to life and I sat down with them and they asked me if I was interested in the job and I said yeah and they kind of handed me a notebook and said let's uh 
let's do this thing a few days later. I was hopping in a truck and heading to place it down to Louisville, Kentucky for a, a event called IBEX, which is inter- International Boat Builders Convention, where all your vendors, everything are at, and was able to get back there, which is a good thing because we got a clean slate. People knew who we were and that we weren't the same same company, yeah. and they were all willing to help us. And you know, we rolled in. That was in July. They bought the company. Then in October, I was down at IBEX, <clears> and uh, December or in January, mid January. Uh, rolled our first boat into the Minneapolis Boat Show, so that was in 2012, and it's been been a whirlwind, but it's been an awesome experience. Met a ton of great people, you know. We built the awesome Warrior family, and it's just been been fantastic. And it's a hell of a boat. I, uh, it's a tiller guy. If people don't know it, you, you gonna run another tiller this year? <laughs> I still, I got another tiller getting wrapped up at the plant, and. Throw some electronics in it so we can uh, head out to Lake Erie and catch a bunch of fish. Hopefully, yeah, no doubt, right? It's uh, every time I see a tiller, I'm like, that's it. It's a warrior guy. I know it's a warrior guy because <laughs> your whole warrior group is tillers. But damn it, those things cruise. You know, especially back when you had that Evan root on there. Yeah. It was. It didn't matter how rough it was. I'm taking off out of Green Bay and I'm going twenty. I'm just a sissy boy out here. Like I gotta, I need my boat for work Monday. I'm not gonna beat the hell out of it. It don't matter how rough it is. Kent's got that so bitch floored, hammered down. And it's just, the, the, the boat's obviously a little heavier. Most of that water is just, you're just plowing. Just cause there's no, there's no, there's one speed. I mean, <laughs> no, they, they're running right pretty good. Cut the water nice. And, you know, the, the big thing is, yeah, tillers, tillers are definitely the staple for Warrior. The, you know, but we've, uh, our flagship <laughs> has definitely been our 238 that, 23 footer rated for a 450 i mean that thing's just taken the world by storm since we released it in 21 and and that thing is an absolute beast and i'd love to have one going to lake erie but i just i just can't give up that tiller so i guess i'll be yeah. i guess i'll put some good rain gear on if the wind blows yeah yeah it always cracks me up and hey who you know you're talking to your coast who'd you know i got kent or adam i'm like oh you got good rain suit <laughs> like wear it you know cause you gotta get wet it's just bottom line right it's it, if yeah, it's, rough, if it's, it's not if rough it's, out you know yeah if it's ripping you're gonna get wet i mean other than that i think last summer you know other than when it rained there was many many there wasn't many days that i i wore my rain gear which was kind of nice because yeah the weather was good the wind was winds weren't horrible so it was a it was a good good summer yeah well we had a it's about time though because we needed it because the previous two seasons was crap yeah, weather yeah, pretty miserable it. Yeah. yeah, so it was good to have it last Spring year. Spring Valley started out pretty cold last year, so yeah. at least at least we got a little smarter this year and at least pushed it back yeah, till the middle of April. I'd be tournament, more for tournament May. days were good at least. Yeah, yeah Spring Valley. Yeah. yeah, practice was no, 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 no. The same with <laughs> Detroit River deal. I was like, no, nah, this this isn't good. This is yeah. it's just bad on equipment. It's hard on your stuff. It is, and and, and just everybody's everybody's running around with hundred plus thousand dollar boats and nice vehicles, <clears> nothing else. <throat> And most people, the first term, first place they're going to use that boat for the year is that first tournament. Nothing like dragging them, dragging yeah. them through snowstorms and salt and slop. Yep. To uh, kick off the year and season the boat, right? Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. I uh, my boat slid off the trailer in the parking lot because the trailer was icy, <laughs> and uh, we got lucky, and the skag hit a curb, so it kept it about that kept far, it from going all, all, the, way all the way off, and was able to three guy, four guys just pushed while I winched and. It slid back yeah. on just as easy as it slid off. So yeah. that's, uh, I went out the night before late thinking, oh, we'll get a, you know, it laid down a little bit. But of course, you pull it out. I mean, everything freezes and yeah. shouldn't, have, shouldn't have had it un- unbuttoned anyway. But the boat ramp was really wasn't steep at all. And I mean, I know better now, but the guy with me unhooked it. And it's not his fault. I should have been, been like, no, nope, leave it hooked till it's in the water. Yeah. You know, and, but he hit the brakes because he was going down the middle of the ramp, um, which ended up being the, the savior because the median was there and it yeah. stopped, stopped it so because i mean i'm just standing in a boat and talk about helpless when you're just standing there and you just feel oh, yeah. it going and you're like i all i could do is trim down and so i reach for it and <laughs> fortunately that that did it but i was like yeah. oh, well, this is gonna suck you just gotta dump your boat right on the ramp in yeah the that's kind of like that feeling when you're backing down and the truck just starts sliding well, you know the the hopelessness and just hope when you hit the water and it always will but when you hit the water that it stops so yep yeah and it uh yeah nothing like feeling completely helpless you mentioned the 238 i pulled up uh after guiding the other day next to one um actually the guy fishing with this guy was a co-angler at that tournament um, okay 
or one of those Mowbray's tournaments. He's like, "Hey, Brad, remember me?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I do." And and uh, he was with his his buddy and he had a two thirty eight, and I'm in my ZV twenty next to him. I'm like, this thing is this oh, it's freaking huge, man. This is a beast. I climbed up, <laughs> looked at it. I'm like, yeah, he loved it. I, I don't know his name. If I did, I'm, you'd probably recognize it. Um, older guy, retired guy, but that's just yeah. what he wanted for his big and comfy. And I'm like, this is a this is a big ass boat. Well, yeah, it's crazy. It's uh, you know when we we talked about doing that boat and I drew it up and pitched it at the owners and they kind of looked at me cross-eyed a little bit and I'm like, Hey, I think it's, I think it's an idea. And it took us a few years. I mean, it was three years in the making before we finally uh, went from paper to fiberglass and it was, it took off as soon as we, as soon as we released it, it took off. I think we verbally released it at our dealer meeting in August. And by the time the first one was built in October, I think we were sold out for a year already. So, geez, it was, it was pretty pretty fantastic. It, with the hope, of, the hope of having doing seventeen that first year and being able to max capacity and get that second mold built and keep things rolling, it was pretty awesome. And it's just, it's unreal. I mean, people ask me what the difference is, and I mean, our two hundred eight calling some boats probably one of the best out there when it comes to running rough water and keeping you dry. And people say, ask me, well, how much better is the 238? And I say, words can't even express it. I remember the first day I, I took it out and hit my laps and took a bunch of dealers out and it was calm. Next day, the wind was going to blow and I called my wife and I'm like, I'm not coming home today. I got to go drive this thing tomorrow. Went out and took it out in some threes. And I mean, it was just, I mean, you could have took a cup of coffee and drank it with a little lid on it. Three footers cruising at 45 is insane. So, um. Yeah, it's 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 a wild boat. It's just been fantastic. We were at Sioux Falls last weekend at the Sportsman Show down there, and the amount of people that just walk up in awe of how big that boat is 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 pretty impressive. And you know, it's it's big, but yet it fishes small and handles small. Like the first time I was going to go put it in, I was putting at Malax and using a smaller uh, launch as you going out of Fisher's Resort, and it was like. Hmm. How is this going to be putting in and out of here? And I, I, it was just like driving a 20 foot boat, so it wasn't that no big problem. of a deal. But you talk about big boats, and I mean, it's no different than you know, 20 years ago, how many people had F 250s or yeah. three quarter ton pickups for grocery getters. Now, now you see it all the time. So, yep. like, like boats, I look back at when my dad started fishing, he was running the 18 foot lun tiller at the time and then they came out the 2090 and i was like man and there's like the 19 foot boats and i think uh tracker had the targa 20 yep. foot targa and it was that was when that boat came out and it was like holy man that thing is huge everybody was running like 618 rangers and 619s and stuff like that and nobody really had a 20 foot boat yet and when those 20 footers came out it was like the wow factor with 175s and 200s on them and then all of a sudden now we're yeah. talking 23 foot boats with 450s on them and it's just like it's just endless it is and it's i mean things don't get smaller prices don't no. come down i don't care no, if no, say they never do. coming down or not it doesn't happen that way once no. they go up and maybe a little bit of you know margin there but but very little we're not going to go from you know 150 thousand dollar boats to 125 um, no absolutely albums, not maybe come down a couple bucks but i mean obviously a lot of components that go into that the you know the motors the trailers uh brett king was on here talking about that with this you know yard craft and bath cats it was like i i control the the sparkly stuff or the glitter he says right right, right? And they, you that's know, what it boils down to and yeah you look at that i mean <clears> I look at look at the accessory list that from 10 years ago to today and it's you know doubled and maybe tripled on a, on average on boats and the amount of screens going into them and all with the forward yeah. facing sonar and just it's almost insanity of of what what people are doing to to go catch a fish and what you really need to go catch a fish you know so. right because you and i both know there's there's no money in fishing and no, <laughs> fish no, at no. all so, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of fun right it's a hell of a lot of fun and we're passionate about it and we're competitive and driven and you know it's a good time but it's uh yeah it's not cheap and now you're putting a hundred plus thousand dollars into gadgets to help you know but if you don't have them you're not competing very well with them no you, them. you absolutely got to uh keep up with the times i mean it's no different than anything with tackle mm -hmm. you know electronics everything when sight imaging came out look at the mm -hmm. the p in time i mean i think the site imaging thing took a lot more time to 
progress than what the forward facing sonar has. Right. Um, just going back on the first the first sight imaging units to what we have now and how far they've progressed, I can't even imagine where forward facing sonar is going to be in ten years from now. Yeah, it'll be uh, thermal imaging. It's gonna, I mean, whatever. You just better figure out what it is and embrace it. And dynamite. Yeah, I mean, it's not <laughs> super expensive, and when you, you know, relatively when you compare it to other things, especially if yeah. you know I'm a hummingbird guy, I already have hummingbird graphs for thousand dollars. Like there's a five hundred dollar yeah. rebate, you can add a mega lot. Now, yeah. if you're switching Lorenz to Garmin, or you're switching a whole new brand and whatever, then you got to buy, you know, you're in it for three or four thousand yeah. dollars just to get you going on one unit. Um, but like any electronic, you can obviously buy the head unit, control head units only, and it'll just add transducers separately. And when you break it apart, it's not not as bad, but it, it's no, that's just... that's one thing with Hummingbird on the Mega Live is it is a <laughs> much easier install, much easier addition to put it on um then and i think it with side imaging i still say hummingbird still is the king there yep. and i just feel that they they have the technology and i think in time they'll be up there with everybody else on the forward imaging stuff yeah they just did an update and i updated it early march and it's it's def considerably better than it was oh uh, I'm, i don't use it to track my lures or see the fish chase but more just to find you yep. know, find the fish, identify them, and realize that it's swimming away. It's not a rock. No. Um, but now I can see my jig out there 30, 40, 50 feet, uh, which before I had a hard time. But I'm not running lithium. And, well, kind of the power source to these units is is crucial. But that's the, the next boat component, right? We're adding three, six, nine thousand $9,000 worth of batteries versus our what used to be a $150 31 series, you know, trolling motor battery. Yeah. Uh, is kind of, I mean... I'm, I'm still running uh, lead. I'm going to the classic this week. I do have some meetings with some lithium guys to have this discussion. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, the, my biggest problem is all the electronic. I got the, the live 360, four graphs. That's a lot of juice once you hit that. That is. And, and, and you talk about the electronics as a whole. I, I sit there and I think about that. And I think about, you know, 20 years ago where. Yeah when like seven inch color screens came out or just seven inch screens in, in general came out and I was like, man, those are pretty awesome. And then color came out and everybody, Oh, you have two sevens or you have three sevens Whoa. in color. And it's like, Holy, if you told, if you told the, the NWT guys now and said, Hey, you got to run a couple seven inch graphs. It's how you go pack sand because there's just not enough space for everything that we're running nowadays. And, you know, before you had, couple graphs at the at the console one up front or this or that on the wheel boat now you're running two at the dash two three up in the bow one in the back and yeah we're gonna have to strap honda generators on the back pretty soon because yep. there's not gonna be enough room or we're gonna have to get rid of some of our tackle because there's not gonna be enough room in these boats to put all the batteries we need to run everything yep yep and they're heavy obviously another reason to switch over to the lithium stuff because yeah. it's so so light um you know, but we do, and I, I think lithium's coming a long ways. There's more companies doing it. That is just, now the market's more competitive, so the pricing's kind of leveled out a little bit on some of that. I've noticed it <laughs> has. I mean, there's, and I, I personally still feel there's a place for lithium and a place for your AGM lead acid yep. stuff. You know, I'm, uh, I've been ran Odyssey AGMs for a long time. I still do, <laughs> and and firm believer. And you. I'd have a hard time going to a lithium starting battery at this point just because yeah. the, the whole point is they, they show voltage until they're dead, and there ain't nothing worse than go, <laughs> right. to, go to crank that engine over and be just like when you got that last screw to put in and hurt, you know, yep. you got a, got a winning sack of fish in your live well and go to crank that key and it's dead, and there's no jump in a lithium or anything else. No, it's, it's scramble it's, time then. So it, It's done. Um, I have the powerful charger thing in a boat, so that's that's pretty slick where it's got emergency start and stuff, and yep. it'll charge lithiums, acid, or AGM. Um, yeah. So that was a good But you got to get your big engine running to start charging. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it charges fast on the go, but yeah, yeah, I think. And then I don't know if mercury is changing. I don't know if we're a while you couldn't couldn't use a lithium on the big motors right yeah there's a few there's a few that you can um a few that you can use on uh mercury they have like stat uh 
specs that you got to follow or whatever. I think like Norsk, uh, Norsk, Dakota Lithium, I think they're falling in their specs. I'm sure there's a bunch of other ones out there. I know we personally at the factory still lean towards, you know, AGM starting batteries. Um, I think the Lithium has a really good place for your your electronics, mm-hmm. especially with the, the forward imaging. You know, it just keeps you that higher, longer, higher, steadier voltage to give you a better, cleaner picture on that. Uh, if you're in a boat that you need to save weight, yeah, on trolling boat motor batteries, you can do it. I personally can still run AGMs. I have, I, I, I don't run out of battery power. So to me, as I just look at it, it's like, okay, if I'm not running out of battery power now, why would I change something? Why would I? That's why you I haven't, because mine have always worked. They've always worked for me. Yeah, it's been it's been fine. Uh, my acids are. I have 31 series, but they're on their third year. So that's usually about it. And the good yep. thing with the lithium is most of them are like 10 years. So if you do the cost analysis over time, yep. you know you're, you're probably breaking even, or you could even take them out and put them in a, in a new boat. But I, with that powerful charger, it works good. But I know last year in our Cedar Shores tournament, which we have in a couple of weeks, early spring, when Dewey was fishing next to me, we had super high winds. And you just, fishing was kind of tough. And it was blowing 30, 40 out of the Northwest. We went out, I spot locked and didn't move the entire day. But wow. by one o'clock on the first day, I had my kicker motor down, troll master on like 40 something in gear. <laughs> to hold me on spot lock. Oh. And then I had to turn the big motor on to keep the trolling motor charged. And by day, and cause it didn't really pick up till afternoon. So that was like one o'clock. Yeah. And Dewey's next to me at his boat or his buddies, but they had lithium and I, he didn't have to turn the kicker on, but he was, he was fine with his trolling motor. And I had to stay in the front, drop it all the way down just to keep the motor on yeah. water. So I would have had a, a longer shaft would have been great. Day two, by nine or 10 in the morning, I'm already doing that. No. And I'm looking down the line. So some other guys fishing the same and everybody started dropping the kicker. I'm like, you got to have your kicker in gear, cranked up that high of throttle just to hold you in no. a spot. Fortunately, we were done at noon and weighed in. I'm like, hey, God, this is not getting any nicer out. Right. Uh, you know, that might've been a day to have lithiums, but once again, it worked, you know, I yep. turned a big yep. motor on and, and that charger charged that thing. And it was fine. I could have sat there all day long probably, but no. and a big motor wasn't scaring fish. I think it kept them away from the boat, which is perfect because they're pitching, you know, yeah, yeah, the shoreline. Yeah, keeping them in, uh, driving them to where you can catch them. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's a little thought behind it and a method to the know. madness sometimes. So well, that's awesome. The Warriors, you guys still building them one at a time? Oh yeah. We still build them one at a time. We're doing, you know, three, four boats a week. Um, say we got a good group of guys, even through the slow fall and slow times and COVID we, uh, kept our guys around and we make sure we take care of them. Chuck up the plan. He does a heck of a job keeping everything rolling and keeping everybody happy. And you know, our, our crew, I, I'd, I'd put that crew that built our boats uh, up against anybody's because they're passionate about what they do and they really take pride in what they're building. And yeah, we're building one at a time and you know, you can just see it, see it when, see it when something goes wrong that they, they actually truly do care. And, um, are passionate about what they're building. Well, I can I can see it on the trail. I used to say this with, you know, I'm a minute mercury guy forever that, you know, we used to have the service trailers there and the Evan Root trailer and Mercury trailer. And I was like, well, there's, I know you're an Evan Root guy, but I'm like, there's a line of boats at that Evan Root trailer. Fortunately, Evan Root <laughs> did a great job of carrying they lower did. units. And I mean, you could have swapped the boat yeah. around. The Mercury trailer, not so much, but there wasn't as many, many, you know, boats lined up over there. But now you you know a lot of the boats are coming from one particular manufacturer, but there's a lot there's there's new stuff out there. We have KMS and the yard. I mean, there's no. you know competition is is good. But you always kind of hear your people bitching about that or this, and most of it's just quality control things. It's just people yeah, not it's just, building them fast. No. You know, driving screws where they shouldn't be. I got holes in my boat that I don't have any <laughs> idea why they're there. You know, they just don't have a lot of no. pride in the work. But I've never heard that about any warrior boat. No one said no, it's a good thing, you know, being a small company, we gotta we gotta watch that warranty come back stuff. So it's a great oh. thing that we have great great guys in the shop taking care of everything because if they if they had a bad attitude, man, it'd make a mess and make my job a nightmare. But being so they do such a fantastic job makes my job for the most part pretty easy. Yeah, there's nothing worse I used to hear people say, Oh, well you got your boat must have been built on a Friday. 
Like, <laughs> should it, it shouldn't matter for $100,000 what right. they build on. You know, it's Monday in the same category. It's like, yeah, they're just, but there's, they weigh out the benefits, all right? We Absolutely. Can produce a ton of them and have a few, you know, issues and, and whatever. Because they're not all like that. You just, apparently, with anything, you're going to get a bad egg here or there. Oh, a malfunction no in, a, in a mold or, you know, whatever it is. But. Nope. And a lot, of, and a lot of stuff that we run into isn't even our stuff. It's you know, <laughs> right. whether it's a seat pedestal or a wire harness or whatever <laughs> else that doesn't get caught before it goes out. But it's, it's just in the general scheme of things, is you know, just try to do the best you can at everything you do in life, and you'll uh, be pretty successful. So that's what our guys seem like they do is try to do the best they can do and build the baddest boats on the water. Paying off, still in business, still getting it done, still putting the boats out there. You're putting the 238 Beast out there. And like I said, I'm yeah. not, you know, there's not hearing anything bad. I didn't get a chance to. You had a guy at the Omaha Sports Show, and I was there, and I, oh, I was talking. He was one of NWT guys on your team. I can't remember what his name was. Oh, I bet you it was Jake Ka- Kahi was down there. Okay. Yep. Nope. That's nope. what it was. I can't, he's the one I can't talk to him, and I just can't even remember his damn name. I can pick him <laughs> out of a crowd. But then I just, I never got out of my booth and had a chance to go in and chat with them, but it sounded like a couple of guys stopped at my booth said they were over there looking at boats and he was talking yep. to them and, and they were like, yeah, they, shows, they, were, they were digging him. Shows have been fantastic this year. You know, we're coming pretty much wrapping them up now. I mean, I yep. think I have one, one show left out in New York the week before Lake Erie. So I got to fly out to Buffalo and go talk boats and come home and hook up and head out to Lake Erie. And then I got some, uh, open house at the end of April down in Missouri. Otherwise all the, Boat shows up in the Midwest here are pretty much wrapped up and time to start uh, digging these things out and going fishing. Yes, yeah, time to time to get them loaded up and get them wet. So that's what they're for. Speaking of uh, Erie, we got we're getting ready, man. We're I don't know four or five weeks away from. I don't even know if we're that far, are we? Maybe four. It. What is today? The it's like I mean, the it's, yeah, leaving in a today. month. Yeah, I think yeah. we're leaving like on the eighteenth yeah. or whatever that Friday is. Three weeks, four weeks. Yeah. Whew, that's coming quick. You ready? Yeah, I'm always ready to go fishing. <laughs> yeah. In my mind, anyways, my equipment and my and my stuff aren't ready, but but we'll get that we'll get that squared away. I'll have a my wife will probably be about sick of me before I leave, so it'll be a good time to leave because I'll be out in the shop a lot, getting everything fine tuned and ready to roll. I get that, you know. My wife's like, "Oh, it's it's you know, I'm guiding and I don't I live in a camper a lot during the summer, and obviously we're on the road four yeah. or five weeks out of the year, and and then and then all the other." things outside of the tournaments that come up so you're just we're on we're on the go you don't get to spend a ton of time at home and make sacrifices with the kids and events and things but my wife's always like oh it's you're leaving and she's the walleye widow I'm like you're tired of me by now are you i mean i've been <laughs> home every day for the last several months just <laughs> driving you nuts you know and yeah she acts like she's sad but i i know she's not she's <laughs> inside she's like go ahead hurry up you know and, yeah. But it's nice. I go get the camper set up, and she works out, you know. And then she can come down Friday night and yep. ready to go. I'm out on the water yeah. guiding, and doors open. And, you know, bring the dogs, and and it's on. So Lake Absolutely. Erie is it going to be a troll bite or forward facing sonar? We got to get it figured out. I wouldn't be surprised if it's one forward facing sonar. I'm going to go shoot from the hip, and I'm going to say seven, eight of the top ten are going to be trolling. It's probably a pretty fair guess. Right. You know, I think there'll be some guys in the top 10 that are going to catch them forward facing sonar, but a lot of that's going to dictate to what we see for conditions and, yeah. water and all that good stuff. If it gets muddy, I think that the uh, imaging will come into huge play. Um, but other than that, I mean, those big masses, schools of fish, and they move a lot. And, you know, they, they do and get on them. And at the end of the day, you only need five. Yeah, you know, exactly. And I can, can have play, four rods on at one time, right? Absolutely. absolutely. I've, had, <laughs> right. I've had many times of having triples and doubles, but, you know, casting, you can get them back out and yeah, you get, get them out quick. a lot quicker, too. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a would lean probably more so a traditional angler where I've I've been using forward-facing sonar since it came out. Um, it was a little different than most people. I run mine. I mean, I got it on both spots, bowing in the back, but I've always ran one on my rear trolling motor on my Minn Kota Vantage, and, you know, I have I go back to, like, 2020. I mean, I think that, I want to say they came out 19 was the first year of the actual live scope, 
in 19, but just watching what those fish do when you're trolling. I mean, 2020 championship, I wouldn't have been in the top 10 if it wasn't for that because you could just, you get in that clean water on Erie and you could see those fish way up in the column and you were moving, you could adjust your baits and you weren't marking much on, on your 2D. So you could make those adjustments and find out where those fish were at. And, you know, fish and ghost fish, but you're catching them. You know, and even even bait, like one of the craziest things I still remember is on Green Bay, going along and the fish will move, you know, when they're about 10 feet in front of the boat, 20 feet in front of the boats when they move almost every time. And like schools of alewive on Green Bay, you'd be going along and when it'd get to that 10 feet in front of the boat, that school would be seven feet down from the top. They'd drop to the bottom, boat would go by them. Once the boat was past them 10 feet, they'd come right back up to where they were. And it's just, you know, just, I always said when it first came out, I mean, just learning and the reactions to fish and how they react to boats was, was huge, Yeah. but it's, it's, they've got, it's gotten so much better and, you know, now it's, now it's, you know, pinpointing individual fish and figuring out it's good enough now. And if you spend enough time with it, you can pick out what fish and cast a fish that you don't want to catch too. Yeah. That's where they'll get the upper hand on areas if you can get out of the, the four or five pounders, which are still great fish and go, there's, yeah. you know, I want, I want to eat that one, that one, and that one, you know, and target yeah. them and get them to bite. If you can get that figured out, we're all going to try it. I mean, it's, Oh, absolutely. I you think you'll see the Lake Erie, I'll see the most people standing up the bowels this year right. that I've ever seen. So, yeah. And I was out there for some shows and just, just talking with the people out there and how much, you know, you talk to these Lake Erie anglers and they're just like, I just hate trolling now. And it's like, you talked to them four years ago, they had told you how stupid you were for fishing one rod, you know? Right, so, nope. you know, it's kind of like always the talk too. always people complain about going to Minnesota all the years back with all the tournaments, whether it's PWT, FLW, nobody wanted to go to Minnesota because you can only use one rod. Well, why would you go there? You only use one rod. That's all you use anywhere well, now. <laughs> now anybody, that's all they're using is one rod. So. Yep, I've had that same conversation. I'm like, we don't go to Minnesota often, and I get it. But hey, you yeah. can pull in Minnesota now, so that's huge, right? Yep. So, and now yep. you're just—that's the way you're fishing anyway. So, I, I'm, I'm fine. Let's, let's hit yep. some of these Minnesota lakes up there. They have good fishing, and especially yep. where a championship or it's forty boat field. Yes, I, I think I, if you know, my input on our championship location for this year is uh, not very well thought out. If you ask me, I mean, we we did it at at Dunkirk and we got we got blessed with three nice days and everybody got out there and got a fish but I mean I remember fishing in 2017 whatever it was at yeah, Green wasn't Bay and it was down you know, we had two two canceled days and all with the the way the rules oh, were yeah. this year it's really kind of crappy because there is no makeup days for our championships and yep. you know, even our regular season events the way the rules are written is there's no guaranteed makeup days, so we could go to the Great Lakes, and we got three of our tournaments. What I'd say on Great Lakes this year, um, we could potentially have one-day shootouts on those right. because it's tournament director's disc- discretion whether we have a makeup day or not. So, yeah, it's uh, the schedule is definitely different. We're going to you know places that typically get pretty good numbers. Green Bay actually hasn't gotten I think about 113 in the last several trips out there. Erie yeah. has always been the record breaker. Erie, Erie's pros. good in Winnebago. When those Bago. two places just you know. just get a lot of anglers, you know, and Green Bay. I don't know what our numbers are going to do there with with that three fish deal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can look at it both ways. I look at it as plays good into the Ford Imaging guys, but yep. also it's going to affect them too because a lot of pressure. Uh, the anglers that went to catch those three to five pound fish that could compete with five fish, those anglers can't compete with three of those fish for the casting fish. So I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on the casting fish as a whole. So yeah, that's a uh, last time we were there. We got well not two times ago, and we got turned into a one day tournament because of blow days. Yeah, you know, that's strictly the reason I didn't go up north. Was that's, there's there's not enough fish to go around. No, and maybe there is, but when you start putting pressure on those fish in twenty foot water clarity, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be, you know, yeah. and, and, and that one's that one's gonna be some pretty good boat runs too, because it's, you know, that's yeah, talk about some of the stuff that the anglers as a whole, I would say, would have liked to see change. Where you know, 
some boundaries and stuff like that. And, you know, you take, take that, or we'll start at Lake Erie wide open. Where do you want to go? We're going to, yep. we're having an early year. Those fish might be 50 miles east already. So we get to run there and then you go to Green Bay and no Canada though. We eliminated, we eliminated and that, Canada. And that's, and that's fine. I mean, right. I, I'm good with that. It's kind of yep. like, kind of like at uh, Green Bay, you know, it's, going to be a lot of running there going out of Pocono. This would be one of those ones that you're where we probably should have been going out of Marinette on, you know? So Yeah, yeah, we were, I, I realized that the other day when was, we were getting a house book. I'm like, oh, yeah, Pocono's that far south. That's that, that's yeah. damn near that Brown County line yeah. where you can't go any further south anyway. Right. I'm like, yeah. we, but we all want to go this way. North. So <laughs> we could have stayed up here or yeah. even, I mean, I'm fine. We're on that side of the lake, but. Yeah, you know, I mean, it just it is what it is. It's set. Yeah. We'll make do with it, and who knows? Maybe yeah. there's a hell of a bite going on down there with the early spring and, and yeah, stuff you that's never know what's going to happen. Green Bay is a different <laughs> place, and we'll we'll taste what the cards <laughs> dealt. And at the end of the day, somebody's going to win that event. So yeah, and you know, a lot of those fish come up as well. They're not all, yeah. I mean, obviously we know the ones up north are just behemoths, but like we said, they're they're, yeah. they're a little challenging to catch sometimes. Yeah, but, yeah. but three fish. You might be in at nine o'clock. <laughs> Maybe you know there might be a lot of two fish, two fish bags too. <laughs> yeah, that's. I was talking to someone earlier, and it's just, it's not. I mean, obviously there's skill involved, and obviously there's a little bit of luck, obviously in fishing. But this is the season of, did you make the right decision? Period. Absolutely. It's it, just, it's, did I keep the right fish? Yeah, and it, and wonder if we're going to still weigh in ounces, or if we're going to go to Honda. Hundred, so we can have less ties too. So yeah, because that's, that's not going to change because there's going to be a lot, of, a lot, a lot of tight weights. I mean, we had tight tournaments last year, but this one's going to be even tighter. Yeah. You know, every place we go, there's just not going to have that separation like you'd normally have. So yeah. you know that that one mistake could cost you a lot of a lot of spots and a lot of points. And these, you know, especially these river tournaments like <clears throat> you know Spring Valley last year, where we had Francis Case. This year we got. Red Wing and Skakwea. I mean, like tournaments like Red Wing, these things are, I mean, a half a pound could be 20 spots. Absolutely. Now, back back before, I mean, even if you could have had two overs, would have changed that in five fifths, that yeah. changed it. But when we're going down to four fish and one over, that changes it a lot. But I would, I would stay, I'd take four fish with one over and get a fish the whole system. Than being limited to a five fish and two overs and get a call and only fish Minnesota, Minnesota waters side. because they're just Minnesota waters on pools three and four just there's not enough there for everybody spread out on. Not yeah, that's, much. I've never fished it and it's not that far from here. I keep wanting to run over there you know, like now. Um, I think it's like a four hour drive. It's just as close to go there or go up to Mowbridge for me. Yeah, um, but that's what I heard is they're like, no, the, the Minnesota side's not. Near as good no. as the Wisconsin side. So. It would it would have been like going down to Prairie du Chien and being only being able to fish the Iowa waters, you know. Well, and, yeah, which we never do know. because they're always because yep, the Iowa Iowa waters were out where <clears throat> on there on Prairie du Chien, the Wisconsin side had all that backwater. I mean, it was ninety yep. percent of the pools, so it's no different when you get <laughs> get up top. Except the three and four are very small pools in in relation to the the whole thing, so. And we're coming, we're going out of pool three now versus pool four. Yeah, which is which is kind of an interesting, interesting thing in its own. I mean, there's been a fair amount of tournaments out of Treasure Island Casino, but that time of year, I mean, it would have would have played good into the cards of the anglers if we could have went out of somewhere like Lake City or you know Red even Wing. yeah right, Redwood right. Cobble Park, you know, which Deep is Point the host Park. town. Yeah, I'm sure they no. changed it. They, you know, obviously the new administrative company has a relationship with them and MWC's yep. out of yep. there. <clears throat> and you want to, you know, go where you're welcome and, and play out and, and, and who knows? I mean, it's, these are just what they are. We all, I always tell our people, yep. if you don't like the rules, don't fish it. Um, it's a choice we all, we all have, but we love yeah. it. We're competitive and we're junkies and we just yep. bitch about things and we'll just go continue on. And, and then, uh, there's changes ever than than there is, and if there ain't, that we just adjust fire. But I think these guys are kind of learning as they go too. That uh, yeah, we hope they hope they can uh, change things, make things better. Hopefully, we don't have another year like last year. We're uh, the NWT guys are we're just a little different breed than 
<laughs> some of the other circuits out yeah. there. So. Yeah. But that, you're going to get that with any pro-am level you're at. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, period. You see it in, in, in the bass world and bass circuits as the guys move up from the opens to the elites or MLFs or whatever it may be. Um, but the learning curve for so many people nowadays is so much faster with technology and everything that's available out there that we didn't have this growing up. You used to read the, no. you look forward to the In Fisherman magazine coming out, yeah, you know, absolutely. Or, or Saturday morning fishing shows. And now it's like, ah, let's go to YouTube. I can watch this. This is live stream. I mean, it's, it's great, but it's a little tougher for the, for the older guys, I would say. I mean, the bass guys are, are feeling that as well, but the, the massive wealth of knowledge, but can I keep up with, all of these, I mean, learning how to maximize my electronics, not even forward facing sonar, just in general. Just, you know, yeah, it's, it's just technology. Everything's instant gratis, gratification now. I mean, it's got to be now, it's got to be fast. And if you can't get it, you know, they just jump to the next thing. So I think that's, yep. that's a lot of it is just so much. There's so much information when you go somewhere new. I mean, years ago, you had to go somewhere new and pick it apart and all. You you can find the the past record, past history, and I guarantee any place we go, there's forty YouTubers that are doing videos on it. So you can go, yep. see how to catch them before you get there. At least get a baseline on uh, how to catch them. Yeah, and which is great for guys who's never been to those bodies of water. Right. I mean, I'm, I do it. You can up to everybody watch everything no. they can and be like, oh, okay, this is what they're using this time of year. No. That's working. You know, some of these videos obviously suck, and they're just Joe Blow out there doing whatever. But it's still. You know. Like, eh, that's a community spot. I have absolutely no problem, and I'll do it a lot of tournaments, especially on a new body water, is running straight to a community spot. No. I just I just want to catch just a couple catch fish, fish just to get some confidence in the system no. and be like, okay, I got this to fall back on. Now, probably and hopefully don't ever have to fish there. There's plenty of tournaments where there's a reason everybody's fishing there, and half the oh, field goes it. there and goes, because there's fish here, <laughs> and these are good fish, so we're going to... We're going to work uh, it, but it's it's confidence is key, and I'm sure that you know you you certainly know that if your time yeah. on the tournament trail, it's the most important aspect probably for a tournament angler is having confidence. Oh, absolutely! You got to have confidence in what you're doing, and that's with anything. You know, anything, yep. any sport out there. If you're not confident in what you're doing, you're not gonna not gonna do very well at it. No, I mean you. It sounds there again, and I've said this in seminars for years. I'm like, if you go into that tournament and you have any other thought. Other than I'm going to win, thanks for donating your money. No, because you're not. You're not going to win. If you should be 100, percent I get it. Day two or three roll around and you're out of it or whatever. Now it's a different mindset of I'm just trying to stay in the game or I need to cash a check or get some points. Yeah. You know, but but day one, it you should be. I'm I'm the best out here. I'm in it to win, and I'm I'm going to go go do this. Now at the end of the day, it may, may be a completely different story, but if you don't have the <laughs> more, more days than not, but <laughs> right, exactly. But you know, I, I guarantee when you got first, second, you and your brother were like, after day one, are like, we got this, we got no. this. We just got to do this shit one more day. And we got no. this. Yeah. We had a pretty good program for that one. Yep. You did. Indeed. And that's, uh, you know, trolling trees. I think, is that what you guys are doing out there? Yeah. Just trolling lead core over treetops. Yep. It's not a secret, but yeah. It's still, it's still an art, you know, yeah. Yeah. you know, you got to get the right bait and you got to get it, the speed, the depth, uh, I mean, everything. It's just, yeah, there's you know? a lot. There's one thing about trolling is, you know, a lot of people say, oh, tro trolling so boring and you ain't like doing it right troll, but there's, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of math and a lot of stuff that goes into trolling to make it all successful. Yeah, I always tell so, them I pull a ton of a lead and love pulling lead probably you know more than anything. And oh, this is it's that's so easy. And I'm like, you're not you're not doing it right. <laughs> if you're if you're not up on your feet or constantly moving or doing yeah. something, you're you're just not doing it right. You know, I mean, granted, sure, there's easy times. Now going to Erie is great because it's such a clean fishery. You're not it is uh, especially you know, this time of year. Right, your boat's clean. That's always say what I only thing I really like about it. And I love watching my boards go back and it's big boy bobbers and watching them go down. Right. But at the end of the day, unlike going to Red Wing, where you're going to be in your boat going through 20 different rods, 20 different setups, you're throwing all this crankbaits and hair jigs and three ways and all this different stuff. You got here, you just, you're swapping off, you know, crankbaits. That's it. <laughs> Everything's clean. There's no yep. crawler crap in here. You know, maybe it'll bolts crawlers, but you just don't have all this junk in your boat and no. it, just, it stays clean. Yep. Kind of ain't all about that. I like my stuff clean. So. <laughs> We're, not everybody's like that. I've fished out of and with plenty of other guys' boats or just see them in the gas station. I'm like, how do you, how do you do this? How can, 
How do you get through the day with all that stuff scattered all over your boat? But, uh-huh. you know, each is their own, so. Absolutely. What, uh, we got Sakakawea on the schedule. That's an awesome fishery. That'll be good. That'll be fun out there, you know, good time of the year. Again, they stuck us on one <laughs> end of the world, but, hey, we're yep. going to go and catch them. Yep, yeah, we'll catch them, and it really isn't a, isn't a bad time out there, so. Um, no, there's not. And now you've gone out there. Don't, Warrior, you guys do some events out there, I think, don't you? Uh, we don't do anything there. there. We have our, we have our big Woods. owners tournament every year up at Lake the Woods. Lake the Woods. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's huge. That's a good time. Yeah, that event's huge. You know, you we get, I mean, there's pushed 150 the last two years, okay. and I think we're going to break 150 this year. My goal my goal is to be get that uh, break 155 so we can be the biggest tournament in Minnesota. So. Oh, right now, Leech, the... Lake, Leech Lake has that at 155. So if we can if we can get 156, the Warrior owners are listening to this. Come fish in August on August 17th so we can uh, break that record in Minnesota and put 150, 60 Warriors on Lake of the Woods that day. And that's a hell of a time to be on Lake of the Woods. It is. It is fantastic. That's a some talk about lead core in the basin bite. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And then them forward facing sonar guys are sniping them all two up there. But... Yep, yep, yep. They are. But that's a good I remember time. we had their championship there years ago, which is the first time I'd ever been there. And I think it was my first day of practice by ten AM. And my other you know, my teammate people weren't even there yet. And I texted him, I said, Pick some of these up and we're done. Practice is over. I'm like, this is so uh, easy. I couldn't even, I could drop it 220 feet order it was. Click, count to 10, boom. Uh, go down 25 to, you know, 28, 29 inch walleyes. Uh, and we only have one, and I didn't catch one yep. the first day. And the second day, I think I <laughs> caught three and just kept pulling them out. Yeah. But then it was a little time trying to find those 19, 19 and a half, I think the slot yep, is there. Yep. 19, you got to be under 19 and a half. All right. That's you guys, know what, know what, know what everybody should just do? Go to catch record release, and we can just go catch the biggest fish every day. Yep. Don't yep. have to That's, worry about calling and all that good stuff. That is, uh, it solves a lot of problems in a lot of it places. Absolutely, it absolutely <laughs> does. It I makes, get it. It makes tournament fishing a lot more fun. I know that. Not to mention, yep. you should be lifting your live all up and seeing if your your kids are alive or not. Yeah, it's the challenge. I know a lot of people like to see us go that way. There's always the. I mean, it's hard to beat the way in and the crowd and I don't I mean Red Crest was yesterday. Um, you know, a lot of people said they didn't even know it was on. Oh. You know, MLF's kind of backed off maybe on their exposure a little bit. And then we have the classic this week, but you know, it's just all I see is in here is it just doesn't compare. It doesn't compare to you oh. know, the classic. I think, I think with the right, with the right ma- mindset, I really think you could get there. Um, oh yeah. You know, rather than, if the uh, if the if the tournament circuit gets sponsored by Nikon or Canon or whatever, everybody gets a good camera that shoots video, good pictures. Yep. Rather than having our way and start when we check in, we come in, we hand our cards in, and we walk, go get our stuff ready for the next day, and we come back, go across state at six o'clock or whatever it is, just like a regular way in. And with the technology of today, we could have a stage set up with big screens behind it. That could be streaming live to the people that I can't make it there, so you'd have a good, good show that side of it. And I think you could put a heck of a stage show on for everybody to see if you, I mean, if somebody wanted aim to put the it, effort right? into it. Yeah, yep, you got to take a little effort, and obviously you do it later in the afternoon, or you know, people yep. are off work now. We get pretty yep. good crowds. We had a huge crowd at Big Stout last year. Um, yeah, that was impressive. Uh, but that's a, a community there that kind of. That, that's why you're there. It's a fishing, fishing. It's what you're there to do yes. is fish, and yep. a lot of summer homes or whatever. So guys are on vacation or made it that made sure that that yep. was their their week of it. Uh, but there was people that came from all over. There oh, was someone else. That community isn't that big, so those people. <laughs> those people no, came no, it's from a pretty other small places. town. You know, you can you close your eyes. I got a dealer there in Pickstone, Donlin Marine, and oh, yeah. I mean, oh. you drive through there, you close your eyes, you're through it. So. That's it. It's, like where to go? One, <laughs> it's a one blink village, that's for sure. Yeah. It's yeah. a cool little place, but yeah. we get pretty good attendance at the weigh-ins, and there's just there's something to be said about that. But it's not like we're pulling the fish out of the bags and holding them no, up. and you that's know, just it's, it. Is we're not seeing that. And I think if you had video clips or good images and stuff when you're going across the stage on, you know, big screen. I mean, screens are cheap now. Right. It had big screens behind the stage and that was just your stage backdrop. I mean, I, I really think with a little bit of, a little bit of effort and a little brainstorming, I think you wouldn't need many more people than they already have. And you would, uh, be able to put a hell of a show on. 
Yeah, you know, uh, head-to-head or pro walleye series, kind of tried that for a year, head-to-head, still doing it and doing it more of a, a local level. There's a, And I was talking to someone again earlier about this, that there's a huge production cost when you're trying to live stream. You know, oh, absolutely. Like that. When you're trying to get everybody yep. over the top 10 or whatever, I mean, it's you see Bass or MLF do this, and that those are million, multi-million dollar production companies doing this stuff. So there's, yeah. you know, there's a lot to it. Now, we can live stream our own, you know, from your GoPro or from your cell phone yeah. or whatever on day two or tournaments. But personally, you don't want to mess with that stuff. You just want to fish. <laughs> right. And also, once you lost drop signal, which you're going to drop signal because it's just the way We're it is. Fishing. Yeah, you're, you can't log back on and you're done. So you, you can go through all the work and spend the money to get it set up. And, it you know, you take off and you're not even to spot A and you, you, yeah. you, you've already dropped signal. So you're done. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've dabbed in it. <clears throat> I know guys tried it a little bit last year, a couple, and I don't think anybody really ever got it to, to go through or stick. Uh, you'll probably see more people doing it this year. It'll be kind of cool if you can. But then again, it's, you know, what people probably don't realize is some days there's not a whole lot of fishing. No, or how much downtime there is. Yeah, because you're only looking for those five right bites. I don't care if I get five bites today, long as they're the five right ones. It's not exactly fun fishing, just like practice when your co-anglers or your buddies come out and pre-fish with you. You're like, you know, they want to pound on them. You're like, I got, I got one or two. I, that's it. All right, let's go. Yeah, pack it up, we're moving. They're like, what? <laughs> so I always tell them, I'm like, this isn't fun, guys. This is a lot of work. It's obviously it's fishing. It's fun, but you know. If it's an eerie, that's something different. You want to troll and just, you want to take some home to eat. Let's boom. That's what's nice about going to Lake Erie. You actually to catch them, you know. Right. You, yeah, practice, you, can, you, can, you, you don't feel you guilty just, if you if you put 30 fish in a boat, you know. Right. There's 300 million of them here. I think we're okay. It's uh, yeah. it, it's good to go. But we definitely, yeah, you just don't want to beat up your fish. These bass guys don't even run hooks at their practice, you know. No, they're, exactly. They're bending them down and they're just like, okay, that's a, that's a catch, you know, because yeah. they saw it or they felt it. But they're like, okay, good. They're pulling it away and. Oh. Like, all right, we're not I don't quite to that level. I need to see some of these suckers. I, I can't tell you that was a, a seven, eight pounder, but I get it. Yeah. You know, you beat them up, you go back there day one and they're all gone. So yeah. Yeah, fish that's are getting the, smart. That's the thing about them fish. They like to use those fins and it can be yeah. very frustrating. <laughs> it's For amazing. With the, with the brain of a pea, you know, they get they can outsmart a guy pretty easy. Yeah, that's always uh, part of the confidence key. I tell people I'm like this. You know, the brain is the size of a pea. It's small. And the minute you let that fish win and out and outsmart you, I said, pack it up and go home. You're done. Oh. I said, you and gotta, all, they, all, they, all they're really after is two things in life, spawning and eating. Kind yep. of like a buck. Yep. They want to breed, breed and eat. You know? It's just like us guys a little bit sometimes, I suppose. So <laughs> Yeah, have, something have, like that. <laughs> that's where it all comes from. We, yeah. have, we have other priorities here and there. It's just a male thing. So I always, when yeah. I can't get them to commit to the bite, I'm always like, that's a male. Clench, how you know? I'm like, it won't commit. It won't bite. So it's got to be a male. Yeah. I'll get a kick out of that. Well, it's going to be a good season, I think. We got some, uh, some things we got to to deal with or challenges or work through, but it just makes it kind of a chess match in a sense. And it's fishing. So either way, it's it's competitive. And I mean, obviously, we all like a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh Always looking forward to getting the season started. It's never, uh, never comes fast enough, but yet comes too fast at times. So <laughs> ready to get out there and hang out with the crew, you know. There's, yeah, the... Adam's taking the year off this year, chasing his his boy is going to be a senior next year, and he wrestles oh. all, all year long. So he got pretty hectic running around the tournaments with him last summer, and he's going to focus on that this year. So it'll be Justin. And I, and then we're uh, teaming up with Mike Diffenbaugh this year, so it should be a good time to get on okay. the road. So. Yeah, Mike's a great guy. Uh, yeah, those kids, man, they get wrestling clubs and stuff. <laughs> That's I got it. a 10-year-old, and it's enough at at his age. It's every weekend when in the winter and half of the summer. So It gets it's better. Fun. I got one in college, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they're my stepkids. We have them every other week. So, But we got the girl comes home tonight, and choir singing show she, she's a performer and, and dance yeah. three nights a week and it's uh it's go 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 but mom's all over that stuff and you, you miss enough of it so when you do get a you know attend it and watch it it's you know make sure yeah. when, you're, when you're home make sure you you make it and, and it's it's awesome i love she's Absolutely. biased but she's pretty damn good um that's what i mean we lost brent hendrickson from traveling with randy and i years ago same deal as kids are yep. wrestling clubs and just busy and and uh I think now they're bigger and hopefully they're, I think they're, 
they want to fish. So hopefully he can, he can jump back in, but the guy's also a surgeon and doctor and he, he's got a lot, he's got kind of busy. He's got a lot so, going on. <laughs> he's got life, a lot going life gets, on. A, life gets in the way of it too, too often. Yeah. Life gets in the way of this fun fishing stuff where you're not making a lot of money, right? These yep, right. Priorities. I got to go to work type stuff, but yep. we'll keep chasing it as long as we can. And, uh, you know, that's just, that is what it is. And tournament circuits come and go and changes are made. And like I said, that the aim circuits out there doing great stuff. We have the casino cup. Uh, I think end of we're just going through some adjustments really, you know, any, anytime yeah, you have we, anybody new move in, yep. you're just going to have to make some adjustments and they're, you know, give them a little grace and allow some learning curve and uh, we'll see where everything goes from there. But as long as we're signing up and fishing, these things will be around. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully our, Hopefully we can have good numbers again this year and carry it through, which I think we should. We're going, like you said, good locations. So um, we need yeah. those good numbers because we need the championship fully funded. Because absolutely, that's where the money is. Even, <laughs> even, <laughs> even though the catch on all that is, is only two hundred and fifty dollars from each entry fee is going to that championship. You know? but, yeah, but I'm guessing you'd see some different numbers if if they're short ten or twenty boats more than the. Uh, yep. 250 so yeah and we just you know we don't know obviously the co-angler numbers are, are anticipated or appear to be very high so yeah <clears throat> hopefully the pro numbers are uh we'll maintain it we'll find out real soon in yeah, a few yeah, weeks hopefully. and uh i probably need to get my entry turned in here pretty soon so yeah, i just did mine the other day so <laughs> did you they, uh, that's the only thing is i hope hopefully our our co-angler numbers don't diminish with the advancements of forward facing sonar you know and and with yeah fishing for one person's limit and all that we're doing, you know. So hopefully hopefully in long term it doesn't affect us. Yeah, we gotta keep them engaged and uh that's gonna I think that's the biggest challenge with, with these limits this year and it's exactly that is the co-angler. Yeah. You're yeah. fishing for a, a one a one person limit and how involved and especially if you're you know a, a locked on forward facing guy. Yeah. And I get it. I don't you don't want that guy throwing at the fish you're looking at. A lot of guys have seen it and you know that are adding it throwing their ice unit in the back or add to yep. the unit to, to give that guy at least a little, or, or a gal, you know, something to look at whether they yep. know how to use it or not. But I mean, I've also heard some say the best thing you could do is sit there. And if they got a link to their dash is sit in that chair and just watch, learn, watch, you know, yep. just sit back, put the rod up and just sit back and learn something here today. Yep. Um, Cause we got all sorts of different levels of, you know, skill set on the co anchor side. Oh, absolutely. You, know, you do. You, know, you can draw a hammer and you can draw not. Nah, yeah. Which, <laughs> like, which which forward facing sonar plays a whole new game in that too and you get, yep. if you get a you get an absolute stud of a co-angler to somebody that can't stand up and cast for 10 minutes much less for eight hours it's a whole different world on that so side I, of things too i think you know we used to get a lot of guys that their wife bought them the birthday present signed them up you know or back when you could guarantee an entry with the pro you yep. kind of get one offs i don't think you're going to get a lot of one offs i think with the demand of all these guys signing up for all four events that they're all probably pretty we're still going to have a few um but those guys that are just trying to jump in one or something i don't think they're going to get in any i don't think they will either so it's the very, guys that signed up few. for all four which are usually the ones that are pretty committed a yep. little bit more hardcore not necessarily younger or older they're just trying to get into it but they're, you know, they're, they're there to learn and take full advantage yeah. of it. Cause it's a hell of a deal. It's a two day guy to trip for 500 bucks. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't, you can't buy anything anywhere else. No. I mean, I, somebody was bitching on the, I think it was an MWD Facebook post yesterday about how it's crap and, and any other circuit would give the co-angler $30,000. I'm like, you, even if they, even if they didn't fish for anything, it's, it's a good deal. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah it's, it's a I'm great like, deal. And you don't want them vested because ultimately that co or an amateur, because it's a pro am, supposed to be the police, the marshal. He's supposed to yep. be the police in the boat. He's not supposed to be in it for having an incentive. Yeah. So Kimos, Tom Kimos had a great idea. He said we should just they should just draw for the the prize money on the co side. I'm like that'd be a great idea. Yeah, take it completely out of the equation, and I mean yeah. they used to give it's, them a it's boat. A luck of a draw. You know? At the end of the day, it's almost the luck of the draw for them anyways. If they get yep. the, you know, you get a pro that. Has a, you could have two awesome pros, and those pros could have two huge weights in the tournament, but you could got them on the two bad days, yeah, and be at the bottom of the barrel. You know, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Trust me, I know my co's have experienced that a, a handful yeah. of times. I know uh, we'll just throw at uh, Sue last year. I got Max's co on day two, and he's uh -huh. leading it. 
And it was the worst tournament I had to hold. I was, I was on nothing. I'm on a yeah. slip bobber bike trying to catch five, 15, 16 inchers. Yeah, I yeah. couldn't figure it out anywhere. I told them, I'm like, sorry, dude, sucks to be you, but this is, this is it. This if I had something better, it. we'd go do it. So we caught some fish yeah. and I went, well, well, we'll go try to where I had some, you know, better fish. Right? I know yeah. that better fish are getting caught. I'm just, I'm just not catching them. Gave it a little while and went, this sucks. Let's just go catch some fish and maybe we'll stumble into 10 pounds. Yeah. So, and, uh, you know, I think that was, when you when you had that good cushion, I think the guys still at least cast a check. But we've all been there. Where we're 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 not on it, but you want to keep that guy in it, you know, oh, the next day. Oh. Um, but a draw of a good co, if it's a jig bite, can benefit the pro considerably as well. Big time, big time. Yeah, exactly. Big time. Oh, <laughs> big can, time. I mean, there's, I don't know that I've had any. I probably have. Maybe where the amateurs caught. More fish. I mean, you put you did everything. You put it there. You're you're the guide in that sense. Yeah. Well, day, well. but you know the guy knows how to fish. He knows what he's feeling. It makes a huge difference. It does. It makes a big difference. So I know there's talks about it and going back to the old ways and and doing this and that. But whatever they're doing is working because these guys are all signing up and the waiting list is getting long. So yeah. um, we'll just continue to do our best to put them on fish and we'll see how the season goes and. That's about all, all right. we can do. Yeah, go fishing. Just go fishing. So, and one last little thing, Kent, you got anything to leave these guys with? A little nugget, a little tip? I would just say just get that time on the water. If you're wanting to be a forward-facing sonar guy, just get out there and play with it. Almost, almost kind of like side imaging. When you first start playing with side imaging, you almost had to just leave the rods on the shore and go, go yeah. look at it because if you're – big into fishing you'll go around you'll be looking with your forward facing sonar and you'll get bored with it and want to just go catch them you know and and a lot of times you're not just trying to fish for fish and catch fish you're looking for individual fish when you're forward facing sonar so i'd say you know get some time spend some time just out on the water playing with it it's not it's not hard at all if you were to ask me i mean i'm pretty dumb when it comes to that stuff and you know it's just go out and go play with it. It's not not hard at all. A lot of people want to make it uh, make it sound a lot harder than it is. And I'd say the biggest thing is clear your history. You know, go to your web yeah. browser and delete everything you've learned, and just go yeah, and drive no around and look at that screen. Yeah, let uh, pay attention to what's going on underneath the water. Uh, yeah. You know, and if anybody's ever been scuba diving, you'll realize it's a whole other world down there. Absolutely. So pay attention to the fish. They'll tell you what they want. They'll tell you where they're going. And everything. It's a, and I've done a lot of electronic seminars that you you just you said exactly what I always tell them is leave the gear in the truck, leave it on the shore because yeah. no. you're going to get sucked in. You know, you want to learn side image or forward facing. Go to where you know there's structure, a bridge piling, something you can visibly see out of the water and look at. Yeah. It, drive by it. Yeah. And try to understand what is 30, 30, 50 feet when you're talking casting is a flip. It's, it's yeah. not very far. I mean, people are like whip it away out there. And I don't see nothing. I'm like, that's because you just threw your bait a hundred feet out of the boat. You know, it's yeah. well, and that's kind of like, just, I'd say that's probably with forward facing sonar. That's probably one of the biggest things is go in your yard and throw a bucket out there and cast at that bucket because your, your casting accuracy is probably more, have more to do with it than, you know, being able to read that graph. Right, you're what I think. You know, twenty degree that cones that in front of them. You know, for the most part, those fish and and with forward facing sonar, you're looking at fish that are suspended. You know, because you're not seeing a lot of those fish that are stagnant on the bottom. You're looking at the fish that are up, and when they're up, they're up for a reason. They're up to eat. So, yep. more often than not, you put something in front of their face that they're going to eat it. So, which you see in the bass guys are throwing our walleye baits around now everywhere. It's three inch minnow in a jig, and they're yep. dropping it because they can see it, and they just feather it back and yep. smack we're like we've been doing this for years man but right now they can see it because it's offshore right, right. we didn't fish it off sort of sense but yeah it's the the evolution of it the evolution of electronics it's all good and it's the evolution of the game because yeah it's, it's, it's what it's it is changing you know you watch you go back and you look at just all the advancements you know and it's fast it's changing faster than it ever has i'd say right now but is it is it for the bad? I don't know. I, I'd take it or leave it. But if you're going to do it, you better learn how to use it. And especially if you want to be competitive in competitive fishing nowadays, you better learn how to use forward-facing sonar. You're going to be 
sitting on the bank scratching her head you know as is as painful it is for me to say that that's it's it's the fact of that's true today you know the only thing i hope is um these states figure something out with limits and whatnot before before sooner you know sooner than later because right. I'll, I'll if anybody says they don't catch more fish with it they're they're just straight up lying because you they're, they're not using it right <laughs> you catch way more fish with it and uh you know our fisheries probably can't sustain everybody learning how to do it so and and we're we're humans and we're people and you know the first thing people are going to want to do when they start catching fish that they weren't catching before is keep them to show their friends so yeah, we're a greedy nation period yeah, yeah we it's... need we need we need regulation to stop us from that so hopefully right. we can make some adjustments i know uh I think Wisconsin starting April 1st, pretty much statewide is all going three fish per person. So yep. you know, where I live in Western Wisconsin has always been three fish per person. So not a big deal there, but I, I'd just like to see hopefully the DNRs catch it. And, you know, pan fish are probably the most vulnerable to, right. to well, it right now. So, so new, there isn't a ton of science and there's, just, you know, obviously a lot going on right you know, now to determine that and watch yep. it and the bear trauma you've seen all winter on the studies oh yeah you know and using this as a tool to figure that out you know absolutely i mean it's it's a there's it's a very cool piece of technology that is out there for everybody to use now and you can get it fairly reasonable and in a price and whatnot and you know all the top brands offer offer systems and they're all great and they all work in their own aspects so you know it's just just taking the time to learn it. Yep. Well said. And uh, not only electronics are changing fast, our world's changing fast. fast <laughs> yeah. Way faster than it needs to be, really. Yeah, we, uh, could, we could go back a few years and be yeah, all right. like the 80s were pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, most people are like, well, how old are these guys? But uh-huh. Reagan era, it was good. It was good. They were simple, you know. Yeah. If we could just keep fishing simple. But uh-huh. it's not. It's where we're at. No. It's what we're doing. And no. uh those to be successful are just going to have to adapt and, and then and roll with it and move forward. And nonetheless, the outdoors are still there. They're great. Get your head yep. up from the screen once in a while. Look around. Enjoy what you got that's, out there. That's, that, that, that's probably one of the biggest things, too, you know, as, you know, I've I've said it before, like, forward-facing sonar is, is really the death of fishing. And people look at me cross-eyed. I'm like, well, just think about it. You know, whether you're taking kids out, and just chucking a bobber and going to sit there and have a conversation until that bobber goes down. Right. Whether you're trolling with boards or you're trolling lead core or pulling a Lindy rig or casting a jig, there's conversation. You're looking around, you're watching exactly what you just said. What's around you? You look at the bald eagle fly by or yep. something, you know, grab a fish, um, big buck on shore or yep. flock of geese flying over your head. I tell you what, when you're, when you're dialed into your screen and you got to do it, if you're forward facing sonar, the world stops around you. And all you see is what you're looking at. And, uh, you know, just like anything, kids with their phones. Yep. They, all, <laughs> they sit there and talk to you, and they're, all they're doing is staring at that phone all the time, and it's no different. So, I mean, it all all falls in. But, yeah, it's, it's you know, changing times and everything else. I mean, pretty soon people probably won't communicate back and forth. They'll just yep. type it out to each other or whatever it is. But um, Take a moment, folks, that's, and that's, look that's, up. That's, that's the tough thing that you see is – you miss a lot of a lot of stuff around you, you know, just like yep. driving around, looking around at the scenery. How many kids nowadays <laughs> never even look out the window when they're in a vehicle? So yep. we used to, you know, count the deer, or count the windmills, or whatever yeah. it was, you know, and what, anything, you know, license like, plate game. Time, and, yep. You know? No, so. enjoy it, folks. Get your head up, look around, take it in, watch those eagles. I got turkeys that have been gobbling up on the shoreline lately, and yeah. I've had to stop my boat twice last summer for a deer to cross. In front of me on the on the Missouri River, so that's you don't see those things if you don't look up. You know, no, pay attention. Exactly. What's why you're out here to begin with is because you love the outdoors. So it takes a little bit yep. of time to just enjoy them. Enjoy catching it. fish Fuck is it, catching fish. You know, we'll, we'll no. always we'll always catch them no. somewhere someday. We'll we'll always catch Some them. Some days we'll catch them. <laughs> Some days, maybe not every day, but they're not going anywhere anytime no. soon. Hopefully, so no. awesome, good stuff, Kent. Thanks for your time today. Uh, we'll put some links down here below to send you guys over to check out the Warrior Bait Boats, uh, Bates Warrior Boats. Actually, that <laughs> Behemoth Two Thirty Eight. I'm telling you, this thing is this thing is massive. It's, 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 a, a, it's got a aircraft carrier for a front deck on it, and it's just uh, it's a it's you're going to be going to a triple axle trailer before you know it, probably with some of these. So, 
Yeah, who would ever think? Who would ever think they just keep stuff would just keep getting well, bigger? It sucks to be like that guy is. when he has all the toll rolls and on his way to Erie. <laughs> he gets right, charged right. for Axel, right? <laughs> so that, that's right. Discourage anybody from buying one of them, but it's not. It's just tandem uh, at this still point. Tandem it's still so tandem. Just like everybody else. Yep. So. so go check them out or boats and uh, follow Kent along on his social pages and uh, stay in tune with what he's got going on on the trail this year. So thanks, Kent, and thank all of you for tuning in. You're either watching us up right here on the Walleye Guys YouTube page or the Walleye Guys Facebook page. And you can find us out there on Google, Amazon, Spotify, Apple. I think that's all of them on those podcast platforms. When you're on these long road trips like we are, these are great things to listen to and get you fired up to go fishing. So stay tuned and uh, we will see you guys on the water. Thanks a lot, Brian. (laughs) 